Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are talking about Ross Jeffries Juniper. Uh, Ross Jeffries is a fellow booktuber. Uh, so far I believe he has a novella, this one, a novel, and a novelette or a short story. I can't remember. Let's see here. Tethered is the name of it. Let me look at it. At Tethered, uh, a novella in Flash. Uh, very interesting. So I'm going to put this up here and we're going to jump into it. Um, the very first thing I'm going to talk about in this review is something I've already talked to Ross about. Um, and I'm bringing this up because uh, he was very welcoming of my criticism. Uh, and it's not really criticism as much as it, is, it was, you know, just editing issues. Uh, he said the very first person that uh, worked on it, he paid to have it edited. There were multiple, multiple, multiple issues. Um, he then had it fixed again in a second edition, and I may or may not have received a bad second edition from Lulu. I'll be sending my notes to him, but for the first 80 pages of this one, it is absolutely riddled with errors. Actually, I need to grab the book again because I want to I want to mention the type of errors that I found. Uh, lapses in tense. There are several sections. Um, five that I counted where he lapses from past tense to present tense in dialogue tags and uh, one time in the narrative. Uh, there was no reason for this that I could tell. Uh, I'm not sure that maybe this is a, a UK versus American thing. I don't think so. I've read a lot of British fiction and I don't remember seeing things like that. Uh, next thing is homophones. Uh, there were two homophone problems. One of them, um, the most striking one, was T-H-I-R, the possessive used for T-H-E-R-E. -E. He was talking about over there kind of deal, and he used there as in the possessive version of the word. Uh, the next one is missing words. Now this one, I can, I can almost promise you, this is an issue with the editing. Um, that's why proofreading is so very, very important. The proofreading catches the errors that editing makes. Um, if you are working with a line editor, especially a line editor, they are going to create problems by fixing your problems. Um, there's going to be missing words, there's going to be extra spaces, there's going to be numerous things that you have to watch out for when doing an editing. That's why there's so many steps in the writing and editing process. You have beta readers, you have uh, content editors, then you have uh, line editors, then you have proofreaders, so, and then people who read the actual proof of the book when you're done with it, like the printed copy of the book, to make sure there's no... And proofreaders read the manuscript. Proofers literally read the proof of the book. Um, the And they call it proof because you actually have it in your hands. You know, it's proof of its, <laughs> of its existence. And lastly, punctuation errors throughout. Um, sometimes, like, hey there, Paul. Um, and that's not a line from the book. But hey there, Paul. Uh, it's supposed to be hey there, uh, comma, Paul. Uh, that's used sometimes and sometimes not. Uh, there are problems with uh, missing punctuation. There's problems with uh, m uh, rep repetitive punctuation. There is just a lot wrong here. Um, I'm saying all that up front because what I'm going to say next is positive. I'm giving this book three stars. I'm taking a full two stars off for the editing. Had this book been well edited, I would have given it a full five stars because I absolutely love the story and the characters. The character... Uh, follows a woman who is the uh, who is seen as the local witch. Her name is Betty. Um, and in fact, it follows uh, two women and a man. Um, the man, well, Janet and, uh, oh, what's his, Klein? Uh, Janet and Klein are married. Klein's a, a monster of a human being. Janet is rather submissive wife, a uh, very country wife. And then you have Betty, who lives by herself and is very lonely. Betty comes across a Tom... Uh, in the road that's been hit, a uh, very, very large specimen, and things start going downhill uh, from there, because the town of Ju Juniper, I keep wanting to say Jupiter, uh, the town of Juniper is uh, has been ravaged by flood, by fire, by damn near any disaster that you can think of, <clears throat> and they are on, uh, they, they're, everybody in town is struggling to get by, so Janet and Klein, they raise cats for food. 
Um, and one of the cats is, is, is massive. His name is Bucky. Bucky goes missing. And so on. You can kind of see where the story is going. Uh, I loved what, what made me so mad and why I brought up the editing problems. And I told Ross this. Um, I even mentioned it on Twitter. It makes me absolutely furious to see an author who is who you know is competent, an author who you know can write, who is a talented writer, have issues like that. Um, I'm mad for him. Um, I'm not really mad at him. There's no animosity here. I like Ross. He's a great dude. Um, he reviewed uh, my book, Life After Dane. I probably should have said that up front. Um, but I had bought this book before he reviewed mine. It's not like it was a review swap or anything. Um, but I, I can't ignore uh, the, the issues with it. Um, and like I said, it made me very angry because the book is spectacular. I would say it's one of the best books I've read this year as far as story is, is concerned. Uh, the twist at the end um, is fantastic. Uh, jaw drop. Definitely a what the fuck moment. Um, and again... You know, it just kind of makes me angry that there's so many errors up until that 80 page mark. And then oddly enough, because it's usually the absolute, the, the, the opposite, not absolute, the opposite, usually people clean up the beginning of the book and then the tail end of the book, if there's going to be errors, that's where they start popping up. You even see this in a traditionally published book books. Random House, You Love Me had three errors in the final, ch in the final couple of pages. Um, you did, you see that, you know, you, your attention lapses, uh, you see it. So I was very shocked to find out, uh, that the end of the book is pretty clean. After those, uh, the, for the last 50 pages, it's pretty much very clean. You have three or four errors. Um, so I don't know if it was a printing error. Um, I don't know. I'm going to discuss this with Ross more. I'm going to send him my notes and he can do with them what he will. Um, but I did love the book, um, the, the, the story. And it is a testament to how good Ross Jeffrey's writing is that I was able to finish the book even though there were so many errors. Because usually when I come across books with that many errors up front, I just give up. And I, I don't want my editor, I can't shut my editor brain off. I can't, I, I just, I can't do it. Now, um, for those of you who'd say people in glass houses uh, shouldn't throw stones, yes, there have been errors in my book. But we're talking a page after page after page after page kind of thing. Um, we're not talking about, you know, sink instead of skin one time or, you know, that, that, that kind of thing. You're going to miss things. But when the book is so... I don't want to say broken when the when the writing when there's so many errors that you cannot enjoy the story when it takes you out of the story that's when I feel it is too much if you've come across one of my books and you have found that that's fine that is very very valid criticism and your opinion matters um, but with, with this one again I can't harp on this enough it is a damn good book it is a damn good story and I'm just disappointed that it wasn't cleaner there in those first 80 pages um, are most casual readers going to notice what I noticed probably not um, are most casual readers going to um, be upset if they do notice it probably not they're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt am I being nitpicky I don't think so not this time there were so many of them that it it kind of ruined the beginning part of the book for me and I'm glad the last half was very very clean um, but have you read Ross Jeffrey's Juniper I'd love to hear from you down there in the doobly-doo did you love it did you hate it did you feel meh about it if you felt any of those things let me know in detail why you felt that way so that we can have a discussion but until next time I have been E you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.